Oh, hello everyone. How you doing today? You having a good day? You having a fun time? Are you prepared? Hello, the bigs. Oh, I still have the I still have the Naruto headband. I think it's time. The ninja ladder climb is officially done. Which means I, I no longer need this. Maybe I'll wear it for Halloween. Maybe maybe I'll auction it off. Would anyone want the Naruto headband worn by actual hard leg Joe? That might be an interesting thing to do. Or maybe give it away to like one of the high level patrons. So you'll play Cleve Ports now, right? Uh, nope, that wasn't on the list. Let's see, the ladder climb pole. If you're just joining us, well, first of all, before before we get too ahead of ourselves, um, for the people joining us on YouTube, what was today's music? We had Burger Shot by Espanto Music. That's, 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 that's the deep cut, deepest cut. We had Don't Stop by ATB, good old 90s techno. And we played the, uh, the theme song for a new internet show that uh, some people are, are interested in. Something that has to do with clowns and circuses. I guess it's more of a gesture than a clown, but... Uh, seems to be getting a little popularity. So... Da, 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 da. I know there's another song that has like almost that exact same tune and I can't think of what it is. I saw it. Great production. I didn't fall in love with it. I, I don't know what it is. It's, it's like, it's not particularly like great or amazing or anything. But I'm, like, insanely curious about where they're going with it. Like, I want to know about all the characters and where they came from and why they're trapped. It, it's hooked me with the mystery. It's hooked me with the, um, you know, the, you know, it did a really great job of, like, plot, very basic. Art style, not particularly engaging or anything. But the characters just have something about them that I'm, I'm curious to know where they're going to go. The lore. Jax is the main re- Jax is alright. How come you don't do any political streams? I've done them before. Um... I find it hard to talk about politics unless there's, like, specifically something to talk about. I don't want to get... I feel like, um... I feel like a big problem with with uh, why people get so stressed about politics has to do with the fact that, like, there's, um... 24-hour news networks that, like, always have to find something to talk about because they've dedicated themselves to showing news all the time. And by extension into the modern day, you now have streams who or streamers who have made a career out of talking about politics, where they're expected to show up every day or every other day, regardless of what's going on, and find something to talk about. And I feel like this endless stream of nonsense is what makes it so difficult to uh, get engaged with stuff like that. I think it's very important to be like, you know, if you have something to say, then say it. But if you don't, it's okay to just shut up and let other people talk about it. If there's a problem that doesn't concern you or that you don't feel particularly uh, expert about, just, just don't talk about that. <laughs> Find someone else who knows about it and be like, yeah, them. I agree with that. They're good. What show? We're talking about uh, the Amazing Digital Circus. Also, pizza. The title wasn't a lie. Yeah, 
I find it, I mean, it's one of those things, like, if there's a political topic, I won't shy away from bringing it up even on the Yu-Gi-Oh! streams. Because, again, I feel like another reason why things have gotten so, um... It's so difficult for people to engage is because politics have gotten, like, high stakes. There's something that's, like, become so, um... Extreme that, like, you only will talk about it in, like, separate little chambers. And then when it gets brought into daily life, people get, like, they start to get stressed. They start to freak out a little bit. They get, like, scared because they're, like... The, you know, it's it's like bringing up sex in like a regular conversation. Suddenly everything gets more tense. So I think it's good to like break that down by being like, yeah, we're going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And we're going to talk about, uh, you know, new content like the digital circus thing. And we'll just bring up politics briefly while we're at it. Hey, Joe. Hello, Canis. How's it going? Some people like having opinion about things they know nothing about. To be fair, um, speaking as, like, a content creator, there is a, an aspect of, like, once you start talking about, like, a topic to the point that people are interested in your opinions, suddenly everyone's interested in, like, like, people are asking you about everything. And when you like to talk, it can be difficult to resist the urge to be like, you know what? As much as I'd like to get a bunch of hypotheticals and talk about stuff, this is not my lane. <laughs> fuck my- fuck sex. All my homies hate sex. Asexual polycule. That and it's hard to have a civil conversation these days. Okay, I feel like that- part of that is, um... I'm trying to think of the word. I think the reason it's hard to have a political discussion these days is because um, politics is so compartmentalized, right? Like, if the only place you hear about politics is in, like, private political circles, um, if you're not talking it with, like, your coworkers or your friends or your family or whatever, then it's really easy to fall into, like, an echo chamber or an information silo, as they call them. Where it's like, if you're only doing it in this one area with one section of people who are passionate about politics, it's really easy to get sucked deeper into that. Um, you know, ta talking about it more casually um, is a... W and, and yeah, so... It, uh, sorry, I lost my thought there for a second. You get... It's easy to get stuck in those. And then the problem is, right, when you get into, like, an echo chamber, your, your uh, beliefs tend to get more and more extreme. They tend to get more, um, you know, it becomes obvious because you're in a, like, every time you talk about politics, everyone agrees about some basic stuff. And then when you leave that and you talk with, like, regular people who aren't insulated in that group, you can say something that to you and to all the people you talk with is, like, obvious, and then they question that. They're like, I don't know, is that really true? And that tends to make people angry. <laughs> So I think, I think talking about it more casually with more different people and having like your views challenged or if not challenged, at least like hearing other people's viewpoints, um, having that be more commonplace will help it make, help make it easier for people to talk about politics. I hope you're doing fine. I'm doing pretty good. I made my own pizza. I got trapped for legit 37 minutes. <laughs> I hate that that's become a meme. It's so perfect. But I hate that, like, some outsider just came into our community, dropped, like, one post, and then that became the default, like, meme of, like, if something is going long, it's like, this turn is literally 37 minutes. They had a funny little article about non-political streamer talking about politics. Yeah. To be fair... And again, that, that's another thing of like the, again, the, I'm going to call it compartmentalization. This idea of putting politics in its own little category and not talking about it. Is that then when you do have something to say, if you get stuck, like it just kind of builds up and builds up. And so you have, you know, many famous instances of someone who doesn't talk about politics, who keeps it bottled up for years. 
and then something just like pushes them over the edge and they have to make a statement and because it's all been built up they end up just like angrily ranting into the void in a way that alienates almost everyone instead of just being able to talk about it casually My grandfather is a politic. <laughs> How are you doing, Alma? Oh, people talking to each other. Everything is politics. Exactly. Which I guess brings us to the first thing that I wanted to talk about. Well, first, for the people who are curious, we had the, um... We had the poll for what next month's ladder climb is. And after many back and forth, it was very close. <laughs> the winner seems to be... Scareclaw. Scareclaw won just barely. It beat out by two votes, Pearly and Earth Machine, which were both tied for second. How did the pizza turn out? It's amazing. Scareclaw, Snore. Yeah, it's... I don't think it's particularly exciting, but people have been showing me some different things. There's some stuff we can do with it. My Twitch was bugged. I couldn't go to your streams. Remember me? I was even in the White House. I don't. What were all the decks on the poll? So if you don't know, the decks on the poll are suggested by the $10 patrons. Anyone who's a $10 patron can suggest a deck, and then they also vote on what there is. So there's a lot of there's a lot of decks on the poll, but some of them have like two votes, you know? Two, three votes, they aren't, um, they were never really in the running. But if you want to know all of them, Gishki, Speedroid, Odd Eyes, Purely, Orcist, Dark World, Rescue Ace, Evil Eye, Makanko, Dinomorphia, Earth Machine, Blue Eyes, Dragon Link, Witchcrafter, Plunder Patrol, Scareclaw, Marincess, Kashtira, Rika, Therion, Sky Striker, and Magic Key. So we had like 20 decks on the list. Most of them got between like around seven votes. The only ones that were really in the running, the only ones that got over 10, were um, Scareclaw, which got the most. Hurley and Earth Machine are in second by, like, two. One below that is Gishki. And then you've got Plunder Patrol got, like, 11. So it got a little bit, it's, like, in the top five, but it's not, it wasn't really that big. Dinomorphia got nine votes. Blue Eyes got two. Dragon Link got two. Magic Key got, like, five. Does Witchcrafter have something that... Yeah. Let me, um... They got a fusion. They got a fusion, like, earlier this year. When a spell or non-fusion spellcaster effect is activated, activate one of these turns. Just, or destroy a card. Special summon level 6 Witchcrafter. Add a Witchcrafter spell trap. So they've got new support. They got a spell that fuses too. I hope Bood is the vote for Christmas. There's a lot of things up for Christmas. Um, some people want me to want to go like full cheese and do blue eyes white dragon. 
Some people want the salty run back on the galaxy eyes. They want me to go back with those. Um, some people are saying it's Christmas. So we should do um, Starry Night, even though that deck is way bad and way out, out outdated. Some people are saying there's new Constellar support. Those are like the holy stars or something. Let's let's do Constellars. And some people are like, you know what? Like, what's the thing that would make Joe suffer the most? Like, let's have him play Sulphacord. Let's give him a really hard, really bad deck. <laughs> like the worst combination of very, very hard to play and also not good at all. Amazement? Mm -hmm. And Slash wants to see Fluffles for Ame. Maybe we'll get Exodia FTK, maybe. I love watching your ladder climb videos while I work out. Well, thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad I can keep people entertained. Is the FTK doable in Master Duel? Yeah. There's nothing about that FTK that can't be done on Master Duel. I'm surprised I didn't see more of it, to be honest. But yeah, so that's going to be the main bulk of today is like learning Scareclaw and building them. But I already did a Let's Build on Scareclaw very recently. So I already know a lot of the deck. Though we don't have to do nearly as much as we used to. Which is why I'm like, and hey, we can have some discussion and maybe we'll play the, the Duelist Cup. Would Dark Lords be possible? Um, not usually. But if you don't know, December, as a gift from me to the patrons, um, I give up my veto power on the, the ladder climb decks. Normally, if a deck wants to be considered for ladder climb, it has to have gotten new support in the, the last year or been released in the last year. Or it has to have some card or strategy on Master that's available on Master Duel that's not available on the TCG. Pretty much all Pendulum decks are are uh, automatically in the running, except for Sulphacord, because they have Electromite, and I guess to a lesser extent Astrograph. And Scareclaw got, um, well, they've got Scare Cash. Scareclaw Cash Tira. I think it was in this set. Yeah, there he is. Which is actually pretty good for uh, Scareclaw. We've got that. And people are saying Twin Saw was also in here. Weight bridge. If your opponent controls two more monsters than you do, they must send monsters so that they only control one. Isn't this just evenly matched but worst? Scare call slash. Oh, there we are. Twin saw. Tribute a Scareclaw, target two cards, destroy them. And 10% normal floodgates, good to know. And Defang, yeah. So they got, Scareclaw got some new support. But yeah, as I was saying, that's, that's normally the rules, but for December, I get rid of the ability to veto. So... <laughs> Whatever wins for December, that's what I'm playing. Doesn't matter how bad it is. Doesn't matter how unviable. If you want me to play, I don't know, Dark Scorpion Turbo, I'll 
Certainly try. These were the rules created because of Cosmo. Yeah. <laughs> the Cosmo deck was the Cosmo episode was so unfun that I was like, we we've got to have some standards. It, what was it? It wasn't very fun, and also not very many people were interested in it. Vote Numeron. Galaxy Eyes. Every December. I think that's the worry, is like, Galaxy Eyes got some support this year, but they probably won't next year. And we don't want to make a, uh, uh, a habit out of doing Galaxy Eyes every year. Although, Galaxy Eyes, let me look real quick. It was, um, my... Okay. Let me just go to analytics here. Lifetime. What are the most popular videos of my channel's history? Okay, number one, Ultimate Mind Games, the uh, the April Fool's Day episode from uh, 2017 with rank 10. Number two, the the deck build challenge with rank 10 jimbles and dual logs, where we went crazy. Number three, the art gallery with with jimbles, the Yugi poops. And then number four, ladder climb with fossils. Very happy that la a ladder climb, a video from last year, could be in the top four. It's not the greatest, but it's up there. And then we've got two what a decks, and then the Galaxy Eyes ladder climb. For a minute, it looked like that one might overtake fossils, but fossils got even more views. But yeah, that, the Galaxy Eyes, despite being a horrible deck to play that was not very good, um, performed exceptionally well. It's sitting at almost 200,000 views. It'll probably continue to go up. When you start opening, put on the bird hat. The bird hat has nothing to do with, uh, Scareclaw, though. And also, I'm not gonna be opening today. I'm just gonna be testing. Cosmo got indirect support by way of Chaos Angel. That doesn't count. Yeah, Fossils does have 205,000. And yeah, directly under the uh, Galaxy Eyes is um, Preta Plants. Bird Hat is best hat. I think Top Hat is best hat. I don't know, let's see. Chat, what is best hat? Top hat? Bird hat? Hype helmet? Regular old ball cap? Um, bunny hood. You got three minutes. Choose wisely. The frog? The frog hasn't been in the running since we got the green screen working. The frog is cool and all. But sadly, because of the green screen, the frog hat just doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, it looks kind of neat. You can almost see it. Invisible witch hat. Yep. It's the invisible hat with just the eyes. Time to put on my invisibility cloak. That's trippy. It's very weird. Howdy. Now that is a strange one. <laughs> well, 
one second. I wonder if I can do this so, like... Now I'm like a cartoon anime character. The hat just sort of floats. It's a weird one. Cut holes in the top hat so the eyes poke out. No. Buggy fruit power. It's, I should, I should like, if I put like a uh, green lining to the inside of the hat, I could be like, what's inside my hat? Nothing. There's nothing inside there. <laughs> the hat has a hole in the top, except it doesn't. Pure bald stream. Bald! Fortunately, I've, I've been loose on my shaving. The hair is coming back. My eyes! My eyes! Yeah, so far on the poll, the uh, the bird hat has two votes. Bald is beautiful. Yeah, top hat, clear winner. Didn't go hard enough. Oh, hey, I got a comment on Twitch or Twitter. Yo, I'm heading over. Maddie is a dumbass. Please forgive me. Is Maddie here? Did you make it? A Twitcher. Toss a coin for your Twitcher. Hello, Black Kings. How's it going? You simply While we're here, let's get some accessories now. The Archfiend Dual Field would probably be appropriate. Uh, sure, I guess. While we're here, Black Kings, thank you for the two gifted subs! What's the plan for today? We're gonna build Scareclaw. We're gonna watch some videos. I'm not build it, we're gonna learn it. We're gonna build a test version. We're gonna hang out. Who said pizza? I already ate the pizza. You missed it. So, Scareclaw. What's the scariest mate? It's it's probably the Unchained Abomination, right? Like if I'm like even though it's it's the Unchained, it's still scary. Spooky doggo. Oh, the field. The Archfiend, I mean, it's spiky. Somehow this fills me with more dread. A uh, ritual cage is kind of scary. I don't know, if we're looking at Reich Phobia, I feel like the danger field looks more like Reich Phobia. Right? Like it's got the claws, it's got the like primitive planet feel to it. Uh, what's the scariest frame? Probably the master frame. Greed is kind of spooky. D 
Doggo. Yeah, I think it's probably still Doggo. Uh, we never changed it for ninjas, did we? There's not a good ninja one. Skeleton Yam Man. I don't think he's very... He's like spoopy, but he's not scary. Shadal. Yeah, I guess that works. Dolls are kind of scary. Okay, we'll just delete a deck of fire and ice. Scareclaw. Uh, I guess we should go ahead and say that it's the beta. Okay, Scareclaw decked box. I mean, it's a link. You just do the link one. Protector, get the dark and spooky. <gasps> Purple, yeah, this got this has scare claw vibes. Yeah, I feel like the Realm of Danger might fit better. We'll get the pumpkins. They're dark and earth. Yeah, but the earth sleeves aren't scary looking. Get the foolish burial ones. Conco sleeves to bluff. Yeah, so I guess, okay. It's poll time again. What field for Scareclaw? Danger or Archfiend? This one's definitely got more, like, torture vibes. The other one is more like Reich Phobia. The planet that they're from. But this one says scary. You got two minutes. Oh, oh and then the base is this horrible Sarlacc pit. Uh, get the foolish burial. Sure. Um, we could, we could get the R base for rated R for Scareclaw. <laughs> R for Reich Phobia. It's just got that big red. Um, Arise Heart Sleeves to put the, the fear of, of uh, God. Trap. 
trap trick sleeves to put the real fear in them. The O for boo. D for defense. Defense. Chunk, chunk, chunk. A uh, Link Black. There are Link Black sleeves, sure. Uh, the field is perfectly balanced. One vote either way tips it. Danger at the last second sneaking in. It jumped at the last moment. Stop the count, yep. Should have just voted for what you wanted instead of trying to wait or better game the system. Monarch one. Link black. Dual field we're keeping. Field part, we're going for foolish burial. Her. If you want me to go, I mean, they, I guess they did give me $10. You want me to get the Archfiend dual field? Sure, we'll use it eventually. The D for defense. It just doesn't like the R is like so red and scary. Poll. What base? Archfiend hole. R or rated R. D fence. Like the Archfiend hole is winning so far. I'll gift 20 subs if the Archfiend hole wins. Just trying to, I don't, I don't know what, <laughs> what I, I guess if people want me to have subs, I guess that motivates them. I just, I, it's weird to think of the bribery like, hey, hey, if you vote for this, I'll give that guy money. Now you have the teeth reference as your mate. <laughs> Is Hardlay Gaming the guy who gave many reasons why Maxi should not be banned? I gave many reasons why it should be banned. Someone did make a video as to that they're like, it shouldn't be. But like my video was 30 minutes long and theirs was like seven. And like the first five minutes of it, or the first several minutes of it, was just them being like, um, you know, in, in a society we should have multiple opinions and people shouldn't hate on me just for saying Max C should be legal. I should be free to say whatever I want to say. And if you don't agree, that's perfectly fine. But you have to realize that this is that, yeah. I saw you on Farfa, nice. The reaction channel worked.
And uh, I remember seeing the video. I forget what their actual argument was. Basically, I gave like 20 arguments as to why Maxi should be banned. And they, they were like, they picked two of them and they were like, these ones, I, here's my argument. And I seem to remember one they just made so badly, I was like, well, that doesn't count. And the other one, they made like a good argument and I was like, okay. So you got one right. And uh, that still leaves one good argument for Maxi and 23 against it. Also, slash slash X pulling through. Thank you for the 20 gifted subs. And if you didn't get one, you gotta type evaded in the chat. You have evaded your way like the ninja master Geo himself. Instant 20, thank you very much. I saw you on Hard Leg Gaming. Are you related? I am Hard Leg Gaming. You've never seen me and Hard Leg Gaming at the same place at the same time. That's really weird. Slash forgot to gift me a sub. Sub? What sub? Sleepy Geo. If you did get a sub, go ahead and show off what to look through the emotes. What's your favorite of the emotes? I got a lot of them, but they don't get used a whole lot. We use, like, actual chat. We don't just, like, spam emotes here. I don't like Maxi. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> That's why my name here is Ban Maxi. If you didn't get a sub, that's a skill issue. All right, looks like we're pretty good. Tud Sample with the scare emote. Spam fish. Turtle, that's not even one of mine. Critter. The critter emote. Critter still got his little Halloween costume. He wants to be like me. You wanna say hi to everyone, Critter? Oh, uh, anything else you want to add in there? <laughs> Critter, a man of few words. Very succinct. Critter said a slur. He would never. I actually like the cat a lot. It's so adorable! Nom 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 nom. All right. Anyway, um, let's go ahead. Close this out. Open up. <gasps> Pardon me. Yu-Gi-Oh Omega. Uh-oh, the burps have begun in earnest. Do-do-do-do-do-do. There we go. And I should probably get some music going. You know what? Fuck it. If it gets muted. That's a problem for the people on YouTube. Sorry, YouTube watchers. What was it? I had a playlist of like rights free music that I got from YouTube specifically that I could play when I've got something like this that doesn't have music. And then last time I did it, um, it like two songs got claimed anyway. <laughs> they just decided like it's people had claimed the YouTube rights free music and YouTube was uh, too incompetent to realize that that shouldn't be available to someone else. Like, some other company that didn't make it is like, oh, uh, this is an R video. So, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use videos on, I'm just gonna use regular music. And you know what, if, if something gets if muted, if something gets cut out, you know why. I'll just try to turn it down a bit so it's not like, you know, completely overwhelming. Hopefully you can still hear it just a little bit, so things aren't completely silent. 
Can you can you hear that chat? Just uh, just barely, just a little bit. Clips of Dover, yeah. Some of Ame's covers. I don't want to. I I want to use uh. I don't want to use music with lyrics, or I'll get distracted and start singing. Clips of Dover is a great song. I agree. Scareclaw, Beta. It's Dover. Yeah, playing this in Guitar Hero. It was like one of the few good songs for Guitar Hero 3. Guitar Hero 3 is really like... Uh, small, small tangent here. Because I really like uh, the Guitar Hero series and the Rock Band series. But if you don't know, the first two Guitar Hero games were made by a company called Harmonix. And Harmonix is like... You know, they, they're, a company, they're a game company started by a bunch of musicians who specifically wanted to make music games. They invented the idea of the, the first two, or they invented the first two Guitar Hero games. They came up with, I, I mean, I guess there was a guitar-shaped game in Japan. I forget what it's called, but it, it played kind of differently and it only had three buttons. And they were more about, like, they would make their own, it was like DDR, right? They would make little, like, minute long snippets of songs and then have you like hit the notes on a guitar but it wasn't about replicating the feel or style or emulating music from guitar guitar freaks yeah they made it popular and they made it about the music and the great thing about those games like when you if you played the first two guitar hero games it had some songs that you would recognize but it also had a lot of really good deep cuts Songs that were, like, amazing and really fun to play on guitar, but that you might not have heard of or which might not have gotten a whole lot of play. And they chose those because the development team was a bunch of musicians who liked music and had a whole bunch of songs they really liked. They knew what to include, what would be fun. Um, and then they sold the series, or I think it got bought out, something... Um, cause I think originally in order to make it work, they had to partner with Activision and then Activision was like, yeah, we're handing this off to someone else and making this a yearly franchise. So Guitar Hero 3 was a completely different company. I didn't know of that when I bought it. I don't think most people knew that. I'm, I'm sure many of them don't even know it now. But if you play, I remember getting that game and just being like, something's wrong here. This, this set list isn't as good. This set list doesn't like... The, the problem was, right, when you look at the Guitar Hero 3 set list, it's full of a bunch of memorable songs, you know? School's out for summer. Here I am. Da -da -da -da. Rock you like a hurricane. Those songs, like, even if you barely know who did those songs, you've heard them before. Those songs are not fun to play on guitar. They're, they're really boring. They're not guitar-centric songs. They were included because you had a bunch of devs who were just like, uh, what's a popular song that has guitar in it? Throw that on there. And especially a lot of the charts later on were like artificially hard. I remember, uh, I think it's Before I Forget by Sum 41. There's a part of that chart where, like, it's very clearly... It's very clearly someone playing, like, one note. Or, like, playing several, like, dun da 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 dum You know, they're just using one string. And they charted it as chords to artificially make it harder. Because it was just about making the, the, the score. It wasn't about emulating guitar. Before I forget was Slipknot. Did I not say Slipknot? Are we going to keep looking at Soitsu's ass? There you go. You can look at Rat, Rat, Ratacuni. You said Sum 41. My mistake. I meant Slipknot. Yeah, like, Rock Hurricane is... It's a guitar song, but like... Like... dun 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 Dun, 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 dun. It, it's like it's the same pattern over and over again. I think it has a core um, 
Does it have a solo? I forget. I mean, the guitar battle with Satan was cool. Yeah. It had an epic solo. Uh, I don't remember. No Rob Zombie made it into Rock Band or Guitar Hero. Um, it did make it into Rock Band. But yeah, my point is, if you look, the, the company that, that made the first two Guitar Heroes that then left, they went on to make Rock Band. And I love the fact that, like, if you look at what Activision was doing, um, they had copyrighted uh, the plans to make, like, you know... Uh, they had copywritten, like, Guitar Hero 4 through 7. They had copywritten Drum Hero. They had copywritten... Or not, tra trademarked. They had trademarked Bass Hero. They had trademarked, like, Sing Hero. They, and then Band Hero. And their entire plan was to, like... Okay, over the course of the next 10 years, we're going to make incremental things for every instrument, and then eventually we'll combine them. And Harmonix was just like, nah, let's just do, let's just release Rock Band and have the whole thing be here now. They did that stupid DJ game, yeah, DJ Hero. They're like, ah, we're just really, and they basically forced, if you look at Rock Band 4, or not Rock Band, uh, Guitar Hero 4, that had drums and bass and vocals added into it. And you could tell by looking at the set list, it wasn't designed for that. Most of the set list is like guitar songs. <laughs> you could tell that they saw that, and they're like, fuck, fuck, we can't trickle this out. <laughs> they tried to marvel. You know, it, it, you know, there's, Marvel did that well. When you're talking about a rhythm game, I feel like, and especially the way they did it, right? The big thing that I remember, the big difference in morality between um, Guitar Hero with Activision and Harmonix doing Rock Band, is that like, I bought some DLC for Guitar Hero 3. And then when they announced Guitar Hero 4, they're like, can we use the DLC in Guitar Hero 4? And they were like, no. And then they released a lot of the same songs again as DLC. They're like, if you want to play them in this other game, you got to buy them again. Rock Band, meanwhile, when they released Rock Band 2, they're like, not only do all your, your downloadable content from the first game transfer to Rock Band 2, but for $10, you can get the Rock Band 1 disc and re-license all the songs on it as DLC. So you can just add the whole ask set list from Rock Band 1 onto Rock Band 2. Then they did the same thing for Rock Band 3. Then when they did Rock Band 4, that was on like a new, that was uh, like 10 years later, that was on a different console, you know. They're like Xbox One and PS5. They're like, surely we won't be able to transfer DLC. They bought a license for it, where you could again pay like $10, $20 or something, re-license all the songs you bought on Xbox 360, and have them transfer over to Rock Band 4 on the Xbox One. Anything you would bought previously transfers over to the new generation of consoles. The non-guitar peripherals will add it in post because of how janky they were compared to everything else. Yeah. I will never forget, Harmonix is like the only time in history I've seen a company where I was like, yeah, I get it. You're a business. You have to make money. You can't possibly give us a good deal. And they're like, we're giving you a good deal. <laughs> Isn't Rock Band EA? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, and they're still making DLC for Rock Band 4. That was the thing about Rock Band 3 is that, um, er, yeah, with Rock Band 3, they put out new content every week for like four years after release. I still play Rock Band 3. Um, I bought a new 360 and translated my hard drive over to it just so I can continue playing it. I've got like a real drum set that I got a plug in so I can plug it into the, the Xbox. 
and it's um I think I have I have almost 500 downloadable songs. I'm still buying some, even though they're gonna shut down the Xbox Marketplace in J July. <laughs> it's a shame the market got saturated with so much. Yeah, and I mean that's the thing. You had you had the three Guitar Hero or the, the three rock bands. That was all they made. They made the three. Oh, they they made rock band Beatles. So I guess they made four of them. But all of them were improvements that translated over. And then meanwhile, Guitar Hero released like 12 on like every platform and just completely saturated the market with garbage. You need to buy the songs now so you can get maximum value. Unfortunately, the, uh, the thing to transfer your songs was a limited time deal. You can no longer transfer your songs over to the Xbox One. So I'm stuck on 360. Oh yeah, there was a Green Day rock band. Never mind. There was a rock band for... Yeah, but that was on the... Um, that was like 10 years later on a different console generation. The rat you're looking at is on Omega is a warrior type. Yeah. Well, it's the new Vels. It's the hungry burger archetype. All of them are warriors. Because they have to fit with hungry burger. Yeah. And now there's clone hero. Now we've got clone hero, so I don't need to buy rock band. Really, I just need to get... I need to get, like, another computer that I can use for, um for Guitar Hero, or for Rock Band. I actually learned to play music through Rocksmith. Yeah, I learned to play drums through Rock Band. Anyway, I'm sorry for that long tangent. <laughs> uh, Scareclaws, am I right, gamers? There's a new simulator called Varg. Yard. Yet another rhythm game. It's just another rhythm game. It supports guitars, drums, vocals. Oh, it supports pro guitar. That's amazing. Oh, nice. And it looks like that's that's my my biggest thing that I hated about the um the biggest thing I hate about Clone Hero is that it's based off the Guitar Hero uh, visuals. And the Guitar Hero visuals do everything is like circles. And I'm like, I hate this. I like the squares. You can fit more squares. It's easier to tell how many. They don't overlap with each other. I will have to look into that. It's still in beta, though. Okay. So here's the thing. Normally... Here's the thing. is Normally what I would do on this is I would build a... Um, I would build a version of the deck by reading over the cards, and then we would watch a whole bunch of deck profiles to learn. But I already I already did that with the Let's Build of Scareclaws. The first part. Like, I already know what all the Scareclaws do. Uh, let's see if I can... Do 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 star number one. Yeah, like I already know what all the scare claws do, so we don't really need to do that part. I think we really just need to go into the <laughs> into the looking at YouTube version. Uh, bookmark tab. I will bookmark Yarg to remember it for later. 
I feel kind of bad for the people watching on YouTube. This, this stream is a clusterfuck. You tuned in for like... I'm gonna have to name it something not like Yu-Gi-Oh related. Because I tuned in to see Yu-Gi-Oh stuff and I've just been talking about like Guitar Hero and Rock Band the whole time. <laughs> and now I'm going to be doing this and when I, if you, you're unfamiliar with this, when I watch other YouTube videos on stream, I never save it in the VOD. I always cut that part out. Because I don't want to re-upload other people's content. You could put a timestamp, maybe. What if we get and never get to Yu-Gi-Oh stuff? And yeah, some people are pointing out the background music is a uh, a remix of the Nut Chat theme. I mean, at this point, it's kind of gone off the rails. What do you think of the new? What's the best sim for AI versus AI duels? No idea. Isn't go to your favorite deck now? Yes. Okay, so let's... I'm, I'm always... One second. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this off. So yeah, for those watching on YouTube, watching the VOD, we're gonna be, um, we're gonna be going away. But first, it's always weird what happens when you, um, like type, when I, like I click on the search bar in YouTube and before I even type anything in, it gives me suggestions and I'm like, what in the Sam Hill are these? Uh, check. Okay. There we go. Click. Lakers vs. Nuggets. Okay, I get that. Tottenham. Bears vs. Raiders. Greedy by Tate McRae. Back for more with Anita. So music, music. Sports, sports. What's Tottenham? Does anyone know what Tottenham is, chat? Oh, it's sports. Football club, okay. I thought it was gonna be some weird thing. I guess it's good. Also, yeah, for those one, I, I, I turn off, whenever I get a new um, social media thing of any kind, any new account, Google, YouTube, uh, Twitter, first thing you do, go to the security options or go to the, the privacy options, turn off all search history, turn off all trackers, turn off everything. They used to just give me the front page of YouTube as it appears to like a new person, but now they've just stopped recommending anything. Now I go to the home page and they're just like, your watch history is off. Please turn it on so we can recommend you some things. I'm like, your loss. <laughs> I don't want you to know what I've been watching. Do not track me. Do not use my data. We recommend you leave. <laughs> okay. Scareclaw deck. No? I don't think I will. New scare saw, ugh, new scare claw support is sick. Top tier scare claw deck profiles. Master Duel Central. Haven't heard of them. Fifteen thousand views though. Hey everybody, it's Dark Arm Duels today. We're looking at scare claw. We got a really good thing. Zephyr War Games Yu-Gi-Oh. First place scare claw deck. Uh, I built Scareclaw. Cali Effect is usually not deck profiles, though. He's like skits and then like a funny duel. His content's pretty good. It's just not what I'm looking for. First place, September 2023. These are in real life, but looking at OCG list or TCG list can give us some idea. This Scareclaw deck profile, this was two months ago, so it won't have the new support, but it might still good. Most expensive, best new deck. 
Don't care about decayed. Um, let's go ahead. Scare Claw Master Duel. Moha, easy guide and deck list. Crab Master Duel. Easy wins. This is the same person. Scareclaw Kashtira, Duel Links meme? Sure. With 80% win rate in the Duelist Cup. There is no Team Samurai X video. Well, we won't. There, we don't have the best one. What can we say? We'll just have to try. Okay. So we're going to do this. Um, first, I'm going to go make a cup of hot cocoa. I'm feeling in a hot cocoa mood, chat. Okay. I'm on the three baloney train. We're going for the baloney. We will play a Visa Starfrost. Play Baron. Baron. Let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, I got to put the music back on. What website is this? It's not. It is a program called um, YGO Omega. Uh, we're gonna go one unicorn question is do we play like a birth add one cash tira Uh, that's a maybe. Put a maybe on a lot of these. Maybe we'll play Birth. Maybe we'll play uh, Theosis. Maybe we'll play the Field Spell. Arrival? Which one's Arrival? Scare Claw Rival. Oh. Uh, I definitely don't want three. It's a soft effect? It's not a soft effect. Or is it the banishing to protect is a soft effect? I don't think I want three anyway, because if you open with more than one, you're like screwed. And you don't necessarily need it going first. Uh, we'll play one twin saw in case we have to go first. This is something I feel like if you're at the point where you're searching this, it's already too late, right? Here's the thing about Straddle. I feel like Straddle is either at three or nothing at all. Like, we're either playing it to, to stop targeting effects. It really depends how big our targeting effect's gonna be. Uh, Pearly does not target. Arise Heart does not target. Yeah. It's, it's a maybe. 
Your opponent cannot target Scareclaw or Beast of Starfrost with card effects. Also, they cannot be destroyed by card effects. Yeah, like if targeting was a thing, but I, I feel like most of the big stuff we have to worry about in the meta don't target. It would be nice, like, if Imperm and Valor were, like, the two biggest threats we had to worry about, then I think I'd play Straddle at three. Pearly targets, but we can't negate its effect. Yeah, Arise targets, but then it gets to equip this. I know Fenrir does, but... Yeah, because here, here's the thing, right? Most of the time... Um, even if we play Rota, we're not going to start with this. And even if we do, we want to search like a rival. A lot of times we're going to start with one of these three... We're going to summon it. We're going to make our, our Scareclaw Link. Yeah, most of the time we're going to summon one of these. We're going to make the Link and we're going to activate the effect to search the field spell. Which we need two of the field spell. Field spell is going to get us Reichardt. And then Reichardt searches. If all that goes through then we don't have to worry about either of these. These are only useful to make sure that this goes through without being disrupted. So if we're going to play these, I think we got to play them at three and have them be something that we hopefully open with to insulate against this being used. But I don't think there's enough to justify playing these two. Especially if, uh, I, I, unlike most decks, because this is such a hard go second OTK deck, I kind of want to start with like a go first version. What's going on? We're building Scareclaw. Trivi Karma's not in Master Duel. Straddle helps you punch over really big things. Straddle outs a 5k Noir. But... Okay, so... Straddle... If they have a 5k Noir, that means they have a Noir with materials. So if I go in to punch, they're just going to, um... You know, spin back the monster. It doesn't matter if I've got the big attack. Tryhard is immune to Noir. Isn't isn't Noir immune to Tryhard? Noir is immune to card effects. Noir is normally in defense. Yeah, although I think I'd rather play Kaijus. Well, again, we're, we're doing a go first one. So, okay, we'll try this. Thrust is in. Yeah, it's again we're we're playing a we're playing a go first deck. We're trying to playing a <coughs> <coughs> ladder climb. Yeah, 
I want to try to play a go first deck that can beat through um, going second if need be. So if we're going to go first. Thrust, I guess, if we get hand trapped. Dimension Barrier, we could play Daruma, but Daruma, if you thrust it, they kind of know, right? Uh, let me look at Cash again, Tier. So I'm actually not familiar, how do these lock you? Okay, if you control a cash Tira, you could special summon this from your hand, but you cannot special summon except for Ixies. During the main phase, if this was normal, banish to cash Tira, banish the top three, and this level becomes seven. And Theosis. Claw. Target one cash Tira, special summon one with a different attribute from the deck, but for the rest of the turn, you cannot special summon monsters except for Ixies. Okay. play one birth I'm gonna play one wraith so I'm gonna play one theosis because I think there's a way we can end on like a rise heart plus try heart Called by? Yeah, we probably want called by. Activate Theosis after Tryheart, but before using Tryheart's effects. And then once we do, what does that lock us into again? Where's Theosis? I put it in here, right? Oh, it's up here. Um, from the extra deck, except for Ixies. All right, so that's why we put in um, Cicada King. And I guess uh, Red Eyes Flare. So that way we can have like, we can make a Tri Heart, then we can activate Theosis, make an Arise Heart, then we can use Try Heart's effect, summon a level 3 from the graveyard, search a level 3, special summon it. We're locked into Ixies, but we can still make Cicada King. Or if we have another um, Cash on board, we can make two level 7s and go into Flare Metal. Oh, it locks us. Oh, okay. locks us into scare claws.
You also need one for Twin Saw. Good point. What's the other trap do again? I guess this is a negate. An Omni negate. Although we still need. I can't use it under a rise heart. Okay, that's all I need. Oh yeah, this is it too. Hmm. 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 Okay, go to the two thrusts. 44 card deck? Let's try some test hands. You would cut baloney? Of course you would, you butcher. Uh, okay. Special summon. Activate, we get Theosis. Theosis is the one that locks us into Ixies. Normal. Special summon this while we're at it. Get the field spell. Activate. Add you. This fucker! Then we can make try hearts. Activate, summon back the baloney, search the scare cache, uh, activate, oh I got, I should have theosis first, yeah you're right, mistakes were made. I could still Theosis. I could summon a cash, I have the scare cash. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and we'd just be like, no. Get out of here. Uh, neither player can activate links. Okay. Yeah, I just have to be mindful. I just have to be a mindful Mary. And I just locked myself into this again. I just, I just did it. Bone Mouse is one of our most deadly matchups. Mm 
Rematch. Um, normal. Try hard or light heart. Bobblehead get planet. Planet search. Reichman. Reichman special summon. Search, Twin Saw, Summon Back, Hmm. Oh yeah, this lets you draw, right? No, what is the draw? It's... Okay, it's on that guy. We can get the scare cash. And that means the Theosis is online for later. I mean, this is still, everything's in defense. We've got Icarus attack, we've got Maxi. All right. Special summon Fenrir. Fenrir says hello. Um. Get Unicorn, because we already have Birth. Um, activate this, Normal Summon, activate this, oh, but that locks us into Ixies for the rest of the turn. Should have summoned this in defense, no, that wouldn't have done anything. I was like, yes, this gets me cash tier or the scare cash, and then I can combo from then. I mean, it's fine. Tax Dragon D Prison, go. Special cash in defense. Search. Scare cash. Activate this to bait out Ash. Plop the baloney onto the field. Baloney into bobblehead. Bobblehead into planet. Planet go. Add, I don't know, Visa Starfrost? We have no way to get to Theosis, so we just get to this because we've already got many names, right? this now to get the baloney so that when we special summon this now we get the search twin saw and a draw <laughs> the gang's all here uh we're 
going to tribute Baloney. Hey, Lisa, Starfrost here. Special summon. Banish one of the many right cards from our graveyard. Yeah. Right card, bring back baloney. Search the one that gets us attack. Arco. There we go. There's the third, wait. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so if I, so Visa always tributes the Lightheart because Lightheart immediately comes back if you've got Visa Starfrost. Okay. Come at me, bro. I'm ripped. No, you're not allowed. They don't even have to. Uh, sure. Bring back the Fenrir. Let's grab this. Draw. Hey, Maxi. Um, another one. Then we're going to activate this. Target you and the mouse. I will gain attack equal to... Oh, whichever is... Well, fuck you then! Why can't I attack three times? I don't have the one that gives me multiple attacks. Uh, mistakes were made. It's fine. Good luck. Do you need three straddle? Probably not, but I'm trying it. Twin saw. I'm going to be a twin saw. What? Getting rid of recall. And the way it's just going, I just, I might break your fucking face tonight. Give me something to break. <laughs> I'm not sure about the birth. I don't feel like that really helps all that much. I could probably get rid of that. Add to hand, yes. Uh -oh. Yeah, we want to do it like this.
Twin Saw. Gonna get a free draw. It's always another Rykart. Why wouldn't it be? Birth lets us use Unicorn as free material and then reborn the Birth. I guess. Good point. But we'd have to open with Unicorn, right? Is this for Master Duel? Yeah. Yeah, so let's try this real quick. We can Birth... Or we can Unicorn, Unicorn, but if we got this, we probably want to add Theosis, right? Let's see if I can not fuck it up this time. Normal, Bobbly Boo. Have you tried the Adventure Engine? No. It's very nerfed on Master Duel. Add to hand, um, we got Visa Starfrost. Yeah, yeah. We could do both of these combos. Um, activate Starfrost, tribute off this, summon Visa. Visa's here, the bobblehead returns. Now I can summon this, except I forgot to put everything in defense mode, so I don't get a draw. But that's fine. I can... No, we're just going to make try hard. So try hard. Then we Theosis. Get Fenrir. Fenrir gets us Scare Cash. Then we can activate this. Summon this. Get Acro. Special summon the Acro. Oh wait, we wanted to Theosis and then do and then make a Rise Heart. Damn it! I'll get this right eventually. This time I just opened with Theosis. Okay. We got this, we got this, we got this, we got this. Grab Starfrost. Starfrost. Summon back. Um... Yeah, we're gonna get rid of that, unfortunately. But now I can do this. That's how we get the twin saw. And a draw. Nice. We can't summon try anymore? We can't? Oh yeah, it has to be a level three. Oh, does this have the same attribute as Fenrir? That's funny, you're funny.
Wait, why can't I make a rise heart? How did I lock myself? I thought I just said you could summon this by using one cash Tira you control. Oh, if the effect of Shangri- yeah, okay. I mean, I might as well put this out here. We're good! Fenrir. We have a scare claw. We just have to be very careful about it, you know? Like, these are two very threatening things. We gotta make sure to get rid of those. The poor rat is trying his best, darn it. There we go. I'm a degenerate. Look, we still got game. Don't you like my Scareclaw deck, chat? Add Kari Kura, I'll think about it. We're going we're gonna get look, we open with the unicorn. I can do this. I believe in me. Okay. Summon unicorn. Add Theosis. Normal summon baloney. Don't tell me that's not baloney. It's baloney in my heart. Add this. Get the field spell. Activate that. Add to hand. Uh, Visa pop you. Get that. Bring back this. Special summon this. I don't need the extra draw. The extra draw is for grommets. Link the bobblehead for other bobblehead just to get free card advantage. Not once per turn. Activate, get scare cash, activate scare cash, summon, banish the. Um, if this card is banished, target one of your banished cash tier cards. I yeah, don't need another copy of that. Hard make a rise heart. Then we activate. Summon back. Get the Astro Loud. Set, set, set. There we go. We've got macro. We've got a sp uh, spin back. Everything's in defense position. Um, if you try to target, if you try to target anything except for this guy, I can negate it. 
Uh, I've got called by in case anything happens to get into the grave. And then we can twin saw. And then lava golem. But they lava golem, we still got the twin saw. They can lava golem all they want. No, they can't target us with lava golem. We've got the straddle. Yeah, okay. So this is, this is, we're going to try a go first version. And then when that doesn't work, we'll just put in kaijus and shit. Raigeki, fuck. <laughs> we have a rival, do we? You mean Raije Raijiki? big brain. Who needs it? All right, Chad. Let's go ahead. Open up. It's real master dual hours. We're not opening packs today, but we'll build it. Uh, hello? There we go. Okay, we're good on audio. Just need to turn it up a little bit. It ain't cheap. I mean, it's we the last 10 decks we've played have been very cheap. I have like a million points. I'm fine. You said this was be expensive. I've already got everything I need. Rise heart. <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me while I burp. As bros. Dimensional bar. Uh, what am I missing? Oh, yeah. It's so got two unicorn, two Fenrir, two scare cash. Oh, yeah. Visa Starfrost. Barone.
uh, what's it called? Cicada King. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, what other stuff do I put in the extra deck chat? Zeus. Good point. Fortune tuned, yeah. We'll try that. So what do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten URs. Each UR is thirty. So I've almost got enough now. Downard Magician. Most of these are in the secret pack, yeah. We will see. For now though, I actually have to use the bathroom. I apologize. We're gonna be we're gonna be right back. We're gonna have a little little break time. Yeah, chat. If you're if you're uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I've been doing a thing recently. I call it hypothetical time. I've designed some cards, some custom cards, but not not to like you know show off a cool custom card, but to ask questions about the game design in this game. For example, tsunami of red medicine. Gain 16,000 life points. Everyone knows life points are useless. Life point gain is useless. But is that really true? Could we make a spell with no cost that gives you so many life points that it is worth activating or playing in some deck? Play it as a thrust target for time. Yeah. <laughs> Pep be big, yeah, you could make a big pep, you could make, um, there's Manipulator of Souls, it's a, it's a sprite card that deals damage to your opponent for every life point you heal. Aromas might like it. Entirely possible. Yeah, we had that. We had um, a lot of people got a kick out of Big Jom. Big Jom is a level 4 pyro water. Uh, and his only effect is cannot be special summoned. You can't special summon Big Jom. It's effectively a level 4 vanilla. But if you have a level 4 vanilla that you can't special summon on top of a board you already have, if you have to normal summon it, what decks can make use of this? Does it replace something like um, Fossil Dino? If you're just going to play a bunch of Floodgates, do you just like Floodgates and then sit on Big Jom? Adventure. This is insane in 2015. It can out the Jin lock so easily. Yo, is that big Jom? <laughs> He's fucking huge. I don't like it. We've also got the alternative. 
the immovable monolith. It's even bigger than Big Job. And somehow a level 2, because it's got more restrictions. Can't be special summoned. Cannot attack. Your opponent takes no damage. This monster's effects cannot be negated. But its attack is 9999. <coughs> 5,000 defense. So you can't attack. You can't use a burn card while this is on the field if you want to, like, burn for attack. Um, you can't force your opponent to attack into it because they take no damage. It's, it's just a level two that your opponent can't get rid of easily. Yeah, a lot of people are like, I'm playing this in Sprite no matter what. Level two, let's go. Sprint. I like big, yeah, people seem to really get a kick out of big job. And then today, because we were talking about the price of Yu-Gi-Oh, I made this. Revolutionary MRKX Eater of Riches. Another big level 12 machine. The text is tiny. He's a little guy and it's a birthday. You can also Ixie summon this by using one common rarity monster you control. One normal or rare. Unaffected by higher rarity cards. Oh, Mr. Mortox, thank you for the prime hype. When this card is summoned, attach all non-common cards from your opponent's field or graveyard. Gains 500 for every material, and once per turn you can detach materials, inflict 500 for each. What about reprints? Are the reprints rare? If you have a reprint and it's common, he does not devour it. I play branded so this card can't hurt me. There's so many people asking, what about reprints? Like, what part of the rarity don't you understand? If they reprint something and it's not super or uh, ultra, then it can't absorb it. The irony is this card would be $150 a copy. No, because it's in order for it to work, it would have to be common rarity. Otherwise, it literally does nothing. Unless they gave an ulti blow up in the TCG just to make it useless. But it's just like, yeah, I like the idea of a card that punishes your opponent for um, filling their deck with a whole bunch of shinies. Yo, did you foil out your deck? Like, Mark X is going to absolutely destroy you. Short print the common. Shake my head. Anyway. um, Alright, chat. So now it's time for a little poll. We got two options. The question is, what do next? So I made the Scareclaw deck. Um, we haven't actually pulled for it, and I don't want to do that until the next next week. Next week we'll record the first episode of pulling stuff. I want to see what the next what's in the next box and everything. Especially because all of these are in the the, the that pack, the secret pack, so they're not going anywhere. And these are in Rage of Chaos. And how long do we have on Rage of Chaos? Shit. Uh, fuck. I may have to open these today. <laughs> Three days is not, I was hoping next week. Early pulls. It's one card for unicorn. It's not just unicorn. Uh, we also need the Pressure Planet Wraith Soth, and we need the Kashtira Theosis. So it's three. 
three URs. Oh wait, Theosis is in Flames of Fury. Oh, and Wraith so Okay. It's literally just the one I clicked on. And everything else is in the secret pack. Okay, I can just wait till next week. Okay, good. I was not prepared to do all this recording stuff. Okay, back to the poll. Pardon me. Okay, so. Option one. I can go into the Duelist Cup. We could, if we could play some more ninjas. Like we could play some more ninjas. I could bring in Valence, maybe. Generator, Generator did pretty good. We could play something in the Duelist Cup. Just get some duels. Or I could test the Scare Claws on Yu-Gi-Oh! Omega. But that relies on some of you out there having Yu-Gi-Oh! Omega and being willing to help me test. I don't know how many is out there, and I don't know if uh, any of you would be even interested in watching that. Because it feels like every time I switch over to Yu-Gi-Oh! Omega, I lose like 50 viewers. <laughs> but it would be a new deck. So let's go ahead. I'll put uh, we'll put two minutes, the uh, two minutes on the clock. Which one do you want to see? Duelist Cup or Test Scareclaw on Omega? Yeah, like Omega Scatter. And while you're doing that, I will have some delicious chocolate. Ghirardelli. Mmm. Ah, chocolate squares. Mmm. Mmm. Chocolate. Filled with chocolate, chat. MBT is my favorite binding of Isaac Streamer with a strange Yu Gi Oh! side hustle. How sad are you that everyone's favorite assistant wrestling coach is not going to be Speaker of the House? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Was one of the candidates a wrestling coach? Is there chocolate covering the chocolate? Not yet. Jim Jordan? Ah. Uh, I mean, I knew he couldn't win. The Speaker of the House stuff is bonkers, yeah. The thing is, I think because of poor... Because of poor political education, I feel like most, most Americans don't even know what the Speaker of the House is or what they do. Like, I feel like if you've got a fairly decent education, you know, like, the three branches of government. Like, you know the President... You know the uh, the Senate, the, the Congress, and you know there's a Supreme Court. But once you get to anything, you're like, you know, who's the, what's the Secretary of Defense? What branch are they in? What do they do? How are they elected? No one fucking knows. <laughs> Government cast class is not required. It was required for me. As a non-American, I don't really care about the house. Yeah, it's weird because, um, you know, with a, with a lot of um, with a lot of other governments, like if you look at how um, I believe Canada is like this, and I am pretty sure Britain is like this. When you hear of the prime minister, their prime minister is not elected like our president is. 
they're elected in the same way that our Speaker of the House is. It's basically you elect a bunch of people to the Congress, and then the Congress members choose one member of the party to be the leader. To sort of help guide things. And just in most countries, that person is also the head of state. Who, like, can make unilateral decisions about war and stuff. But in America, they only lead the Congress. Which is only one of two houses of the legislature. And then we've also got a president. While it's, uh, it, while I understand the, the need to have our uh, government be kind of complicated to spread out the division of powers, there's a lot of parts of it that seem needlessly complicated. Yeah. So, for us, it's basically the, um, the legislature, like in every other government, they're the one that actually passes the laws. The president has the power to veto laws if they if he doesn't if he doesn't like them unless like I think 65% of the legislature can like override a veto. But the president the president really has nothing to do with making laws. He's just a figurehead. His thing is to negotiate with other world leaders. That way like, you know, if America has to make a deal with France, we send the presidents to talk to each other rather than have a Congress of a hundred English speakers and a Congress of a hundred French speakers try to like negotiate. They're like the representative. And if we go to war, the president's in charge of the military. But he doesn't actually have the power to like make laws, which is why it's so silly when people are like, uh, inflation is bad, damn you Biden, because Biden literally has no economic power. <laughs> Or he should have no economic power. Um, in the case of like, like there are a lot of the, um, a lot of the price increases are due to Trump breaking a treaty with China that then caused a, basically a trade war where a whole bunch of economic stuff, it had ripple on effects into the, the, the economy. Biden hasn't done anything like that, but theoretically he could. It's just that, like, the price of eggs has nothing to do with anything that he's done. Yeah, and the president can issue executive orders, which is a whole other thing. But yeah, so that's, that's what the, that's what the, um, fuck, what deck did I even pick? Are we just on ninjas again? That's fine, I can play ninjas in my sleep at this point. But yeah, that's what the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House is the one who actually, like, you know, if you want to do legislative stuff, if you want to get laws passed, he's the one in charge of, like, starting the sessions. Like, today we're going to talk about this. Nothing even gets, like, put to a vote unless the Speaker agrees to it. Alright, let's start with this. Because we don't have a starter. One, two, three, four, five. Literally didn't summon most of these. Six. And for a while, we couldn't choose one. Welp. Um. I think we have to go for this. Okay. Um, actually... Okay. Go for Kagero. Kagero effect. Summon this. Go, go, Mizen. Um, and then we can, we could get her back. I don't think we want to this time. Um, uh, yeah, we're fine. This is still pretty good. Oh yeah, Trump's, Trump's not, uh, at fault for the inflation. I should clarify. 
The, in, in, the rapid inflation is not his fault. But there are some economic problems that are his fault. But that has more to do with, like, agricultural equipment and the price of steel and stuff. Like, that's not something your average, everyday American is going to experience at the store. Speedroids! Um, sure. Geo Biden. Speaking of Biden, Bidenomics. Everyone go to sleep. Ninja, ninja, ninja! <laughs> Go to sleep, bitch. Die, motherfucker, die. Uh, two attack. Uh, let's go ahead and activate this. Nap time. Baku, the evil shape-shifting master of darkness. Summon. Activate. Get back. Kagero. Uh, normal summon Kagero. Activate. Bring back Mitsu. How much damage on board? 79! I'm so close! Uh, let's go for... Sizen? And there we go. Easy peasy. I mentioned this, someone someone in the chat mentioned greedflation, which is what they're calling this, um, this phenomenon of prices going up, but not because the dollar's buying value has changed at all. Like, it's not actual what we normally think of as inflation. It's, um, just because companies are increasing the price unilaterally, despite the fact that less people can afford stuff. Probably because I, I don't know if there this is an official thing. I feel like I feel like this is a real phenomenon that um, people are starting to realize more and more. But I'm reminded of um, there was this game I used to play in like elementary school when we had like the old clicky clack computers, you know, where where having a mouse was like a luxury. You know, the old eight bit organ trail where your little stick figures moving around. They had a game that was supposed to teach you about basic economics called Hot Dog Stand. Where you had a little hot dog stand outside of a ballpark. And every day they would tell you like, okay, here's the conditions. It's sunny. They're like, it's either sunny or rainy. There is or isn't a ball game coming on. And then they would ask you like, how much do you want to buy of like hot dogs, napkins, soda, whatever? You you choose a certain amount of stock to buy, and then it would simulate the day. You know, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, you've sold this much. You could also determine the price of like how much everything costs. How much do you want to sell a hot dog for? Do you want to sell for like is relish extra or can they add that for free? Do they, um, do you give them free napkins and stuff? 
And so it was it was all about trying to teach you the uh, the best way to do that, you know, like, um, you know, how to find this balance in the way that, you know, when people talk about uh, capitalism working, that's supposed to be the idea is you balance, like, how much effort it puts in versus how much you sell, and then you find a way to get profit. But uh, as kids, we figured out that you could charge... Um, like $300 for a hot dog. And no matter what the conditions, you would always get one sale, no matter what. There would always be one person who was so desperate for a hot dog that they would pay it even if you put the mar the max price, which I think is a dollar. So all you gotta do is set the hot dog price to $100 and just buy one hot dog a day for like $5 and every day you make $95. <laughs> and then and then like you don't have to hire extra employees, you don't have any other overhead, you don't have to worry about estimating the stock or anything. It's like, yeah, you know, the price of your labor plus the price of whatever, all you got to do is sell that one hot dog every day at a like 800% markup. <laughs> On a small scale, it's good, yeah. It's also, that works if you have a monopoly, right? Like if people can only get hot dogs from you and there's no other hot dog vendors to compete with, then hey, all you got it, like you could charge whatever you want as long as one person buys it. It's like, yeah, you're only selling one hot dog a day, but that means you don't have to pay as much to buy hot dogs from whoever makes them. And so, like, I feel like that's the thing, right? Is they're they're ratcheting up prices, and even if it makes it so that sales go down 10%, if they've added, like, 12% to the cost, then everyone who continues to buy stuff, well, that you're gonna you're gonna make more profits, even if sales are down, because the cost of whatever you're making is still the same. You know, um, the people selling the A or the the farmers who are getting the eggs from the chickens, they're still selling them at the same price. Stores have increased the, the price of eggs on the consumer end. So they have no extra cost, but they're getting extra profit. And because a lot of play, a lot of times, you know, it's, um, you know, what's, there's a lot of food deserts in America. You've got one option to buy your eggs, like, Buy them at the marked up price or don't eat, idiot. All right, going first. Level up to win. There's this tweet like, I don't know why groceries cost money. Like, girl, I need them. <laughs> money is important. Well, this is a hand. Uh, activate. Money is very important for something that isn't real. Oh yeah, that was when I was talking- I was gonna talk about this originally, and then I just got sidetracked with talking about Rock Band. <laughs> and actual Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. All right, Mizen Pass. But I, ma I made a tweet, which was kind of cheeky, like I know the answer, but I was like, why do Yu-Gi-Oh cards cost so much money? They're literally cardboard. Leaf place place. If this card is in your hand, your opponent controls, you could special summon this. Let's go for it, Maxi. Also, chat, do you know what the fuck? What what is going on? What deck plays Leaf Place Place? Trap Penguin? Is this a progression playoffs reference? Uh okay. 
Uh, yeah, we'll set this. And we'll set Dancing Leaves. In perm, all right. So here's what we do. We Dancing Leaves. We get rid of this. All your face down are belong to us. Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. What are your what are your plans? Um Okay. Chain this. That changes the calculus a little bit. Okay, so we're going to summon Geo. Penguin Soldier. Um. Do I have something with zero attack? Wait, if I summon face down. Oh, it has to be... Okay. Um... I guess this is zero. Sure. Wait, how come they haven't gained any life points? During the main or battle phase. Main or battle phase. Flip summons do not count. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, we just want to half their life points, right? What is the effect of leaf place place again? It's stuck face down. Yeah, it's stuck face down. Fuck it, we ball. Gang, gang. Let's just let's just inflict half their life point damage, chat. Minus four thousand. <laughs> Valence or Abyss Actors? I haven't played the new Abyss Actors. They can be a little linear. Great Emperor Penguin. Uh, yeah, no tributes for you. But they won't go quietly into the night. They've killed Baku. My longtime friend and companion. Let him win, he's based! 
I will show them the power of the superior flip deck. Get out of here. I will just attack around your penguin. Everyone was like, watch out! The Duelist Cup is mostly full of floodgates and, and nefarious decks. Would you consider Lab with the newer support? Uh, I'd be willing to play it, but I, I have the rule of once I've played a deck, I don't play it again for at least a year. So I wouldn't play Lab again until at least February. His name is Trap Penguin, yep. But yeah, Valence or Abyss. So I think... Based on fun, I can't say. And I can't say on power either. I feel like Valence, though, has more potential because it doesn't lock you as completely as a Bix, Bis Actors. It's not a completely xenophobic deck. So if you invest in the Valence cards, um, even if you can't make them work or you don't necessarily like this version or they become a little outdated, there's always a chance that something else will come along that can use one of those cards or that you'll find a new way to build the deck. It's one of those decks people are always messing around with and I can see it coming back. Whereas like Abyss Actors are just Abyss Actors. You're playing Abyss Actors. Unless they specifically make more Abyss Actor support, you will never get them more powerful. Oh, Lab, just for this stream? I don't have any of the new stuff, and I don't want to open packs just to play on the Duelist Cup. February might be when Lab gets the butler, but when will we get the Scissor Girl? We need the scissoring! Ooh. Sounds like a rock star. I'd listen to Andy Havoc, would you? I love pure decks and disliking putting generic stuff. Then you then you would do Abyss Actors over Valence. Uh Hmm. Yeah, I think we just do this. Scare cash. I wish I'd kept this in my hand. Uh, no. All right. Oh, we could have thrust it. I didn't even think about that. Um. Yeah, I'm fine. This is not a tuner, right? Wait for that normal summon. Show me that normal summon. I wasn't expecting this. Not with the corridor. There's the right heart.
if we do this now, yeah, then they don't have... Okay, okay, we're going to try this. Well, fuck me, I guess. They had the ash. They're Ixie locked? I don't think they are. What have they activated that's Ixie locked them? Yep, proven wrong. Try this. What's next month's ladder climb? Scareclaw. I don't have a clean out to try hard, unfortunately. I do, but I really kind of want uh, no, I don't actually yeah, I have no way to activate Iron Digger though is the problem I think we go for this, and we set this. And then we make Mizen. this face down. Hardrick, thank you for the prime hype. Okay, then we activate this. Tribute their monster. Summon Geo Geo effect. You go face down forever, and then we'll put the Geo face down so they have to attack this. Tobari! Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. 
normal summon. fine. We live to fight another day! Uh, not great, but not awful. Uh... We're still in a bad way, though, because we can't out the right cart without getting something back. Uh, we can make the link as long as neither of these are a thing. But if either of those are a thing, then we're fucked. Let's just go big or go home. This is probably a bad move, but we'll see. Onion, fetch me the tools. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Coral sword, okay. Oh, I've got a thrust too. Um, okay. Try honesty, try honesty. Um, we have the doggo. Shit. I always forget about birth. It's a bitch of a card. No, my pupper! And called by. I mean, they still left me with a ninja in grave, though. Um, let's banish the Tobari. Pop this. I forgot about that. Um, thrust. Oh, we just get the Daruma. Right. Sets. I mean, sure, what do I got to lose? I 
I hate birth. I hate it. <laughs> Battle phase. Okay, let's go. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we, yeah, we have to tribute off this so they don't flip it back up, even though they can get it back. Let's go for Hanzo. Uh, Hanzo effect. Let's grab um, Baku. Baku effect. Summon, add back the Diggy tool. End phase. Check this out, Scrumblo. Oh, they just surrendered, yeah. I flip up the Geo, I flip them face down and the Hanzo, and then I could just flip the Hanzo back, and not only did I get to destroy the birth, but they can't, um, but I get to search as well. There are too many humans. There's not. There's a reasonable amount of humans. Giving Scareclaw go. It's a dope deck. Some, a lot of people seem to think so. I guess we'll see. There are exactly three too many. We must get rid of three humans. Wouldn't Geo still be negated? No. It was for the previous turn and that turn. They were about to end their turn. So he would be back to having an effect. True Sky. Like Blue Sky, but with fundamental differences. Is Valence awful without Electromite and Excess Code? Um, without Electromite, it's weaker. You don't have as many uh, additional tools, but it's not awful. I have a feeling this deck isn't going to special summon a lot, chat. No. <laughs> Black Garden. Um. Yeah, we just go for this. Hey, I'm just enough attack that I could still beat over this. Go away, Rose Token. We're playing around, we're playing around, uh, cat, or, uh, mech knights. 
Have a good one, Damon Dario. Thanks for popping by. Have fun at work. Setting a card? You fool! You rube! You absolute schmeckledorf! Let's go for this. Um, let's see. What is this? Normal or special summon? Okay, check this out, chat. Flip the royal Hanzo face down. be like, yo, what if I wasn't normal or special summon? What if I was flip summoning on y'all? What do you gotta do? Gotta get a flip. What do you gotta do? Don't be a dip. A dip shit. What? Um, okay. Uh, we're gonna activate this. They got something they can do. Okay. I am tired of your nonsense, though. Both your nonsense and your poppycock. Um. Oh yeah, we go for this one. have that they're they can use possibly ah bestial okay neato Now I get a token. It sets uh I am I've been buffooned. Buffoonery, thy name is Joseph. Uh Yeah, we're fine with this. goes. Have a wonderful time. Thank you, Draken Tamer. I hope you have a lovely evening.
I like how Hanzo is the strongest monster on the field. End phase. A. Eh? A. Eh? Yo. Um. How do I get to this? I don't think I can. Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, we tribute off the sides of And we summon... Another Hanzo. I will get rid of this Black Garden, just to wait and see. It just took a turn. He's such a good pupper. He's such an abominable puppy. Okay, now this returns to hand. Maxi. Uh, okay. Okay, finally, we can get fucking... Set this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Joker at this point. Uh, yeah, we put it on Hanzo. Let's get Kagero. Oh, it's only a defense position. up attack or face down defense. Okay. Normal summon. Battle phase. Attack directly. Attack directly. Attack directly. Ninja party! Do, 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 do. Um. Sure, just because I can. There we go. 
Hit him with Tobari just to send a message. Alright, chat. What the fuck was that? Oh, we can't see. Who knows what their deck was? Something with Black Garden. Dub. We've got nothing but dubs so far. I guess everything good is already in the top. <laughs> Don't ash me, bro. Let's go. Grab me this. Garden. Um, wait one second. I can go one step beyond. Wait, no, I can't. Shit, fuck. I already used the pupper. I was like, I could do this and then blow it up and get back something. I guess I could get back the Hanzo for next turn. Or I could set, set the Hanzo. Yeah, that's still probably pretty good. That gives me two targets. Now they can't target this. Now if they have a kaiju, I am still safe. Playing around, Mech Knights. Build a board, Maxi, go! One battle wasp from your deck to your hand. Okay. Pin the bullseye! 200! Uh, sure. Tribute! Geo! What if all your bugs were face down? They're like, what if you were negated? And I'm like, uh, 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 uh. You're not prepared for the ninja party, are you? Adios! You can't negate me, I quit! <laughs> Special summon another? Oh, you betcha. You bet your bottom dollar. Four, five, six. Yeah, we'll do this face down. Because I've realized the importance. We'll do Tobari face up. 
And sure, we'll sell another Tobari. There you go. Shuffle, shuffle. <laughs> Soul charge from the deck. They're like, what fresh hell is this? Uh, what does this do? I just don't want them to have a monster on the field, you know? right and don't come back thrust don't mind if I do flippy flippy Ooh, doesn't matter Let's put the fear into him. Uh, go, go, Mizen. Uh, do we want to keep the monster negate? Yeah, probably. Give him the old Mizen surprise. Attack position. Um, yeah, actually, I think I can game them. I just gotta hope they don't have monsters. I could have gamed even more if I had made Crawl Sheep. Oh no, we don't have the we don't have the field spell in this version of the deck. And I can't set from graveyard. Uh, it's fine. They can't possibly come back from this, right? I'll let you know afterwards. I don't has no bots. I just do what the, the things tell me. Um, yeah, I think we're fine. I don't know what it is, but I want it face down. Go to sleep. Um. do this no flying sting ah oh, it 
wasn't face up, so they still get flipped down. They didn't negate the monster, so it doesn't resolve in the spell trap. Okay, we just win here. I don't I don't even need to do anything else. We've got it. Just give them another Mizen surprise. I'm not going that far. I'm not even trying to get that far. I was just like, we'll just have a couple. Yeah, I'm level 15 now. I was like, we'll just have a, f a couple duels as a treat before the end of the stream. I'll go until I lose. And, um... I haven't lost yet. <laughs> I am doing surprisingly well. I have accomplished many missions. Destroy a card? Yes. Summon? Yes. Summon? Trap? Pendulum? Win? Duel? Duel? Special? Duel? How many is this? 700? Duel? Win a duel? Normal or summon? Activate a spell trap. Yeah, I guess we'll just keep going, you know? Just have a nice night! Duelin' the night away Uh-oh! Duelin', 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 duelin' the night away Uh, did I win the coin toss? No. Stand by, face. Maxi. Come at me, bro. I'm ripped. Sixty card deck. I see, I see, I see. Trappy tricks. Will he special? There's at least one. Yo, was that Book of Moon? There's two. Fuck it, they ball. Just ending on that. All right. Uh, yeah, we're gonna try normal summon in this. Let's go. Um. Dig Diggy Hole? We've already got Dancing Leaves, so I think we do want to Dig Diggy Hole. Uh, activate. Let's 
Summon Trap. All right. That's all this does is summon itself as a monster, right? And then they get to special summon a trap tricks with a different name, which turns on thrust. Special summon monster, banish it. Zeus, I could Zeus. They can't activate this that turn, right? Uh, okay, triple attack. Um, we're gonna take a monster. During the main phase, if you control a trap tricks, you can special summon this. You cannot special summon from the extra deck except plant or insects. Um, yeah, we'll take this one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I could equip. And then comes back. The thing is, I want to banish the, the Hanzo. Um. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're gonna make Baguska! Baguska, go to Bug. Battle Ga! Main phase Tuska. Bazuska. Um, okay, and then we activate this on your monster. Then we activate Zeus. Oh, I didn't know they had a thing. Hanzo was under Zeus. I mean, not anymore he's not. We'll just special summon it. Yeah, I guess I should have... That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. None of this matters. Unless they got Lightning Storm or Evenly Matched. We have Dancing Leaves and Book of Moon. I have no banished monsters, Kaiba. Shit. It's like the one I can't deal with. Um... 
shit, and I got Tobari in hand. So I can't Tobari it, I can't face down it. It's over anyhow, not necessarily. Go for this. I love your chaos craft. Would you play an Edison cube with some viewers? Uh, I am working on a show with cubes. But I'm not particularly interested in Edison. Or with playing with viewers. There was a time when I used to do that and it didn't work out as well as I would have hoped. A lot of viewers are not, um, they're not very good at content, contentery. Triple tack. Fine, I've just got to not summon any monsters. Geo. And we're going to use this to bounce itself. Oh, that won't work, will it? I needed to do that in the other direction. Oh, okay. Wrong order. It's fine, Book of Moons not once per turn. Chain hole. Special summon a monster to the field? Uh, yeah. Big Zeus. Flip you and flip you. All right, I mean, you're pretty well locked down. Then we'll activate Tobari. Special summon the wolf. Now I'm hungry like the wolf. Add back Hanzo. Normal Hanzo. Hanzo gets notebook. Activate Notebook, set Iron Digger, and a monster. I'll choose this one. We'll activate this. Um, on you. Activate, we'll banish. Her. 
just to pop one of these back row. Time space trap hole. Just in time space trap hole. Go Mizen. Special? No, add to hand. Um, battle phase. Attack directly. I'll just I'll just tiptoe over all the sne sleepy plants. Except for Zeus. Zeus is gonna punch Sarah in the face. <laughs> like all the trap tricks are are sleeping. They're having a nice nappy time. And the ninjas are polite. They're like, excuse me, just boop, poke the guy, poke the guy. And Sarah's like, aw, they're so... And then Zeus is just running up like... Ah. I didn't think you were allowed to do that on television. Zeus just loudly runs up and bullies a child. You're a short motherfucker and nobody likes you. Do -do 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 -do. Short, everybody says. Look how short that girl is. And it stops you from forming meaningful relationships. When you were born, everybody thought that you were just ahead. But then the doctor said, wait, stupid motherfucker, little short ass baby got a tiny little itty bitty body and I hate it. Okay. I can't use, I can't use the, uh, can't use Max C now. Shit sucks, bro. Can't get past 18, we'll see. Paces! I saw this and I was like, oh, what is it? Birds? What is it? Cash Tira? No, it's fish. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I could do this. Target Hanzo? Goodbye, Hanzo. Um. Sleepy time for the fish? Sleepy time for fish. Good night, fishies. Go sleepy bye now. Night night. Goodbye. Have a wonderful time. Red alert. <laughs> Stream is going late, yeah. You know, if you appreciate the late going stream chat, maybe consider dropping a sub, you know, show your appreciation. If I get more subs, maybe maybe I'd stream for longer, get more wins. You could watch this, uh, jeez. Connection failed. They did not like the sleepy time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're almost, we're almost on the 10 man win streak. Horo, no, Ringo, thank you for the one gifted sub. And if you didn't get one, you gotta type evaded. You have evaded things in the chat. <coughs> it's that easy. Hey, Darsh gave me three dollars. Better than a sub. True! True facts about subs. Alright, every time I've gone second so far, I've opened back scene. Surely that won't happen another time. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Have two maxis! 
Gee, Bill, how come your mom gives you two maxis? Does someone have the emote? Now you're covered if it's lab, yeah. It's not. It's the first time we faced like a tiered deck. Oh, but they're 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 afraid. They're like, nah, I ain't doing that. Shit, they literally didn't activate anything. I'm fucked. Um Queso, the Black Talon, thank you for the gifted sub. Now Pyro Danny can do the G Bill emote. Pretend your lab? I mean, I'm gonna. Let's do it again! Hit him with the second maxi! Um... Well, shucks. Um, let's go for... Geo. Geo! You, Geo! Who gifted me a sub? Um... Queso the Black Talon. Or Caso. I don't think we'll get the 10 in a row, chat. This is looking pretty bad unless they play exactly into the, the Geo. Or I draw exceptionally well. Cash Tiras, why is that? Because they can't out the token? They can't? Is Arise Heart not able to shuffle back the token? You're a short little token and nobody likes you. I can only banish it if it would be banished face up. Ah. Holy fuck! Serenity Towns with the 25 gifted subs! Those of you who somehow evaded that one, you've got true ninja-like skills. You have abilities that are beyond comprehension. Get dabbed on. Let's see the dabs in the chat. Big Bang. Well, I think I've got this, actually. Surprisingly. Yeah.
Another gifted sub. Thank you again, Queso. Zeus time? Yeah, it's just Zeus time. We prosperity. That forces the activation of the Arise Heart. We take with triple tack. We attack with triple tack. Oh, and we can thrust too on top of everything. Then we just give him the old Zeus caboose is on the loose. How many cards do we have left in the deck? 25? this. We're just going to dig diggy hole. Just a little bit. Um, yeah, that's a good normal summon. Uh, we take the book, though, right? That's the safer bet. Yeah, because we can triple tack and get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We can thrust into Rhoda. We don't want to pre-flip the Arise Heart because we want to steal the Arise Heart. Doesn't it banish itself? Then we steal the Shangri-Era. Fuck, we might have to steal the Shangra. Or do we flip the Shangra down? Now. Yeah, we're just gonna flip this so we don't have to deal with it. Okay. There. <laughs> I'll banish the Book of Moon! Arise Heart Negates, does it? Don't have enough material. Oh shit, yeah. Then they just activate the Fenrir, right? Uh, select the cards to be Xyz material. Oh, 
why can't I chain this? I have three materials. It's a soft once per turn, but I control it now. All right, all right, fine. Um, they've already used the birth, right? Like they used that earlier when I... Yeah, they activated birth and banished the, the stuff. Okay. Um, but I should still... Yeah, we're gonna thrust first. They've used everything except the back row. Set? No. Activate this. Get Hanzo. Normal the Hanzo. Activate. Add. Notebook? Yeah. Notebook, we're going to set the one monster in our graveyard. And we're going to set this. We're going to send these two for Mizen, the surprising ninja. No, we don't want to do that. Um, going to Tobari. Special summon the green ninja from hand. We're going to special summon this. We're going to activate this on you. Oh yeah, the back row is Big Bang. We need to get rid of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this one, only if there's an Ixy face up. Yeah, and we can tribute their Ixy at the start of their turn. Yeah, so let's get rid of this. Then let's go ahead and make this. All the effects. No, I mean you! Let's banish a Tobari to get rid of this. Let's trigger this. Add back the doggo. And let's activate the green ninja to flip down you. Special summon? No. We add it to our hand. Then we special summon. Then we activate... We get back the Diggy tool. Um, we have six. We'd only have 65. Oh, uh, do we add back this so we can get more stuff? Um, we've already normal summoned, right? Yeah, we just get back this. This gets us the most advantage. We'll go to battle phase. We attack. We attack. We attack. Main phase two. We set. Um. Yeah, we make Sizen. Get 
Get Sizen, get the ninja party. And turn. Draw. Activate Dancing Leaves. Tribute off that. Special summon the other Biden from the deck. Biden effect. Flip these two face down. Flip that up. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I know the Fenrir can flip face up. I don't feel so good. We still got this. Theosis. All right. This is where we do this. Let's summon this face up. Still have green ninja. Yeah, I do. Okay, okay, okay. They got that. They're gonna target him. That's perfectly fine. Um, activate. Chain notebook. Scare cash. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be have to be fine. Okay, so we're going to set green ninja. And another copy of Dancing Leaves. Then we're gonna fusion summon Yogamaru using this and oh I not that. Using uh, Green Ninja and itself. Nail biter. Banish one from the extra. We'll do this. We're going to banish you. Target you. You. Flip you face down. speed, although I am running very short on things. They can't get over my stuff, though. Shit. Now I have to do this, son of a bitch! Ah. 
You fool! Nope, I can't do it. <laughs> I just have to have auto chain off. Raigeki! You son of a bitch! They timed me! I didn't have enough time to select all the things! He forced you to make a choice. I wasn't even sure what I was choosing. 10,000 IQ. rip -a -roni. I wonder if he even knew that. What does Big Bang do again? I was just trying to pick stuff as fast as possible. Monster evenly, yeah. So I don't know why I had to I had to choose everyone I wanted to banish instead of choosing the one I want to keep. And then the one I keep gets Raigeki'd anyway. So I think they had it regardless. How you feeling? I'm doing alright. That was a nail biter. I think I think now that we finally lost though, I'm probably going to end it here. Because it's like 1040. And I haven't eaten dinner yet. And it's getting very late. And I should probably do that. But I hope you all enjoyed this last hurrah for ninjas. We've got enough stuff that we can now um, do things for the um, Scareclaw next time. Just buy every accessory at this point. No, we gotta do Scareclaw. That requires like 12 URs. So I think we're good, but thank you all for coming. If you're new here, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. I usually climb the ladder with a rogue deck. This month it was Ninjas, next month Scareclaw. Um, we're kind of in between decks at the moment. We're working on building Scareclaw in preparation for next next month. Um, so, you know, tune in on, on Tuesday if you want to see... Oh, wait, Tuesday's Halloween. We'll be doing the Halloween Patreon Hangout on Tuesday. If you're a patron at any tier, you can join in. We'll be playing Jackbox. We'll be watching some scary movies on stream. Or we'll be streaming them on, like, Discord or whatever. So if you're if you're a patron at all, you can join the Discord. Just send me a message over on Patreon and I'll send you the link. Otherwise, you could check out all my other stuff. I've got the Raw Hard Leg, that's the VOD archive channel. I have the uh pay the Patreon, of course. I've got a channel just called uh Hard Leg Gaming where all of the uh the ladder climbs get posted after they're done. We edit them down. And uh Hard Leg Literature which uh, I'll be recording an episode, the Halloween episode with MBT. We'll be doing that tomorrow, and that should hopefully be up by Halloween. I'll have to rush to get it edited, but it should be there. Otherwise, I'm gonna call it for now. We are currently, yeah, let's only see one. here. It was a pretty big one though. All right, here we go. No, mute, stop, okay. We are currently one, two, three. We're the fifth biggest streamer. How did we get so low? Well, Farfa's up surprisingly late. We got Farfa, we got Luke Von Karma, got Jesse Cotton and the Duologs all streaming. Tough competition.
But fifth the best is still in the top five, so you know I'll take it. Thank you, chat. I appreciate you being here.